Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. The National Energy Regulator has completed two weeks of public hearings as part of the process to determine what electricity prices should be between 2010 and 2013. Engineering News Editor Terence Creamer attended a number of these sessions and joins me today to discuss five questions he believes NERSA will have to answer before making an announcement at the end of February. Terence, welcome to Second Take. The first issue that you believe NERSA will have to answer is whether it is truly equipped to make a decision at all. Why do you say that? Well, it sounds like a non-question. They're the electricity regulator. They've been asked to determine what uh, Eskom's revenue requirements should be for the next three years, and surely they can arrive at an answer. But a number of speakers at the presentations raised this issue of uh, inadequate policy and legal framework for this decision. And the main sort of area of focus was the integrated resource plan, which was published very late last year. The minister made an announcement, Minister Peters, the Minister of Energy, in early December, that this was the integrated resource plan, and that was gazetted on the very last day of the year, the 31st of December. Um, and that plan, we have to say, it was an issue of putting the, the horse back before the cart. I mean, uh, it needed to be there so that, es uh, that NERSA could make this determination, but it, it didn't really guide Eskom's uh, process because Eskom, uh, the document didn't exist and Eskom had to go ahead and make its application first by the, the end of September and then by the end of November, which it did. And it is supposed to be the guiding document for power generation and the power generation mix. And people were raising this as an issue that uh, it didn't exist and therefore how can we uh, make a determination based on a policy void. Now this was raised by many speakers. One, one or two said it really imperiled the process. Uh, Mike Muller of Wits University said, look, you should send this back to government, this decision, and say you didn't have the policy tools to make this decision. Uh, therefore, government, please, you make the determination. Uh, either either take, our, uh, take the evidence that we've heard and make the determination or set up a different process and maybe have an interim arrangement. Uh, most others said, let's just see this as an interim arrangement. But so they're going to have to make a decision. Do we have the policy tools available to us to make a determination? What are the other four questions that NERSA will have to consider? Yeah, well, I think if they, they decide, yes, we have the policy tools and probably they should highlight, look, these are fairly anemic, fairly uh, frail tools, but they are there because legalistically, I think there are, the, the, the policy is, environment is in place, um, although it wasn't properly consulted, et cetera. Then they'll move on to the other, the other questions, the technical part of it. And they are very technical uh, answers that they're going to have to come to. And the first one is, uh, you know, what is the asset valuation methodology that should be deployed? Now, Eskom's used the modern equivalent asset valuation model, uh, whereas most of the, or many of the speakers objected to this strongly, said it's a subjective model and indexed historical cost valuation model should be used. In fact, a study by Genesis Analytics showed it would lop a full 10 cents off the final electricity price, which would rise from around 30 cents a kilowatt hour to 81 cents, 82 cents a kilowatt hour under Eskom's uh, application. They say it could lop uh, a 10 cents off, which is quite a significant uh, decrease. The second thing, and it's linked, is what is uh, the, the rate of return that Eskom as a state owned enterprise should enjoy? Now, Eskom's put in uh, a 10.3, uh, based it on a 10.3 weighted average cost of capital. And they say that is what they require. It's been benchmarked, and they feel that was necessary in order for them to have a sustainable business. Others say this is an excessive rate of return for a state-owned enterprise. They agree that they need a return, especially if they are going to be required to fund a big capital expansion program off their balance sheet. But they say closer to a, a sort of six whack uh, should be acceptable. The other area where they're going to have to make a de decision is, is Eskom correct on its cost escalations uh, or is, is, have they been overly generous in what they've asked for, both on primary energy as well as general uh, costs that are rising very strongly at Eskom. And here, speaker after speaker said, look, NERSA, you the regulator, you have to protect us here. Eskom isn't managing the business. They need to be given strict uh, framework within to man manage their costs. And uh, I think uh, that's you know, rung true with most of, uh, most of the people present. 
please don't give them these inflated coal price valuations at, or escalations. Don't give them those inflated inflation, internal inflation rates. Rather link it back to what we think inflation is going to be or to South Africa's inflation target of 3 to 6% rather than what Eskim is asking for. That would make a very big difference to the outcome as well. And finally, should Eskim get demand-side management costs built into its revenue requirement? Now, Eskim says they need that because they're running the solar water heating program, the efficient motor program, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they are the only really agent uh, capacitator to really run with DSM. And that seems to be somewhat true, but everyone, uh, noted that, look, Eskim's a conflicted party here. They really, their business is to generate and sell electricity and ultimately sell more electricity, not to reduce demand. You know, so they, they, will they do, are they the best agency for delivering demand side management? I think everyone would agree, including Eskim, that they're not, but they're saying, look, we're the only game in town, so therefore give us the money, let us roll out the program. This is urgent for security of supply. So it's a, it's a big debate for NURSA because they, they, do they agree that Eskim is the only game in town? Do they need to run with the DSM? Or can we capacitate another agency like the National Energy Efficiency Agency? And can we fundraise in a way that doesn't uh, rely on the consumer, but rather through maybe the taxpayer? And that is a debate that NERSA will have to have. And, uh, and those are the five, four technical questions and the fifth legal question that will have to be answered by the 31st, uh, sorry, the 24th of February. So how do you think will NERSA respond to these questions? Yeah, I think they, they are in a difficult position. I think everyone acknowledges that in, in a difficult position. I think NERSA will need to highlight that for their credibility's sake, that they're in a, a pickle, that they didn't really feel they had the policy tools, but there was legal, the legal building blocks were there, so therefore they'll go ahead. They might send it back to government. I doubt it. I think they'll make a determination. We need some certainty. We need a, an early decision. We can't have this uncertainty going on for, forever. But I think they're going to be very tempted not to go with Eskom's rates of return methodology. Uh, uh, they're not going to want to go with the asset valuation methodology chosen. And I think they're going to be quite firm on the cost increases as well as the DSM. Terence, thank you very much. That is the Second Tech Show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.